Hello friends and family, welcome back to the Global Pandemic Crippling Anxiety Fireside Chat. We won't be doing 10 minutes of meditation again today. You can uh, click through to the videos at the end explaining how to install the 10 minute guided meditation from an actual meditation teacher. Um, I wanted to continue yesterday's conversation about truth and morality and to bring in uh, a bit of terminology because the terminology is not um, perfectly translatable into English. Um, it's, it's difficult to use words in English like truth, nature, morality, ethics, because they carry a certain connotation and those words themselves have changed over the years, thousands of years, um, in terms of what they mean within the English language or within the languages where they've come from. So this idea of morality, this idea of ethics, which I was saying before has a recursive property. Um, that word in Pali is Shila or Sila. And Sila is representative of both of these sides. It represents both our external behavior. So morally, we choose not to kill, not to harm, not to tell lies, um, these sorts of things, not to steal. And internally, all of these behaviors are reflexive. And this is why it becomes important for our meditation practice to actually engage in sila or morality from the beginning. We need to say, oh, okay, we'll, we'll honestly, we'll put in an honest effort. We will do our best not to kill, not to harm, not to steal, not to tell lies. And there are other rules. <laughs> um, and in doing so, we actually provide a foundation, a bit of help for ourselves in our meditation. And this previously recursive process where if we tell a lie, it becomes easier to lie to ourselves, it becomes easier to tell the next lie, we start unwinding that. And it takes time. Uh, none of us is perfect because of um, a few years of meditation. But you begin to feel the structures within yourself loosen up around these things. And so Sheila helps us in this way. And as I mentioned last time, there is this idea specifically surrounding truth that if we are able to do our best to speak the truth, to avoid telling lies, and even to speak healthy words, beneficial words, rather than those that are destructive, um, we enable ourselves a little bit, even just a little bit, to explore the truth internally, this, this truth of the breath, this truth of the sensation surrounding the breath that we're using as a meditation object. And the Pali for this concept, the concept in English would be to explore the truth as it is. In Pali, this is yata bhuta. And I apologize for my pronunciation. Any of my Indian friends are watching this because <laughs> I'm sure that's abysmal. But um, although the trailing implicit vowel does exist in Pali, unlike Hindi. Um, yata bhuta, yata bhuta is 
is this idea of observing objectively, observing something as it is, without any wishes, hopes, preferences applied to that thing. And this is surprisingly difficult because even if our wishes and hopes and preferences are for something better, something more beneficial, something healthier, we find that we are applying them to the actual truth and that we are distorting the truth. And so this is why we need to approach meditation with this attitude is because we are always tempted to distort the truth, whether we're distorting it in disrespectful, evil ways, or whether we're distorting the truth by our own wishes, even if those are healthy wishes. Um, we're, we're pulling away from the truth. We're not observing the truth objectively. And one of the ways in which we can do this is we can apply an idea which we hold or an idea that we've come to learn or an idea that we have taught ourselves by intellectualizing something, coming to some realization, coming to some conclusion intellectually. So I think about a problem, I come to a conclusion and I say, oh, okay, this, this is certainly the answer. And the difficulty with that is that certainty can't exist. We can't be perfectly certain. We are not perfect creatures. And so if we have some certainty about anything, really, then we are intellectualizing it on some level. We are applying some belief, some wish, and the truth is distorted. So in practical terms, we can come back to this idea of certainty and we can examine it with a scientific mindset. And even if we are certain about science, <laughs> we can still apply a scientific mindset. But the difficulty is that certainty itself is the antithesis of science. It is the antithesis of objectivity and it is the enemy of empiricism. If we are certain of something, we don't allow ourselves to disprove that thing and we don't allow ourselves to come away from our existing beliefs and pursue something new. And this is why Yathabhuta is important. We are observing no philosophy, we're observing no idea, we're observing nothing interesting at all. It's just the breath. It's just this boring meditation object and it's vacillating back and forth, these breathing oscillations that we're experiencing. And we find early on in our practice and continually we will find that if we come to this conclusion intellectually, yes, okay, my certainty is an enemy of empiricism, it is an enemy of truth, it is an enemy of objectivity, let me be objective and I'll sit down and I'll meditate and I'll follow the breath. And we find we can't be objective. One, to begin with, our mind is wandering. Our mind is wandering. Is, you forget objectivity, we can't even stay with the breath. But once we can hold our attention with the breath itself, we begin to find that even our ability to hold our attention on the breath continuously is not enough because our awareness of the breath is not objective. We, are keep, we continue to see it in different ways and we begin to realize that even if we can focus our attention continuously that we are not perfectly objective and we start to realize that perfect objectivity 
is the goal. It is not necessarily the method. And the method and the goal are intertwined. So we practice perfect objectivity to the best of our ability, and we become better at it. We become better at it as we march toward perfect objectivity, should that ever exist. This is really the entire path of Anapana meditation, is that we are looking to observe reality, we are looking to observe nature as it is, in its true form, the truth, the current truth, whatever is happening presently at this moment. and. The better we become at that, perhaps counterintuitively, the better we will find that we are becoming at just about everything else. So we are able to perform our external duties more successfully. We are able to interact with people more successfully. Uh, success may be a strange um, bar to set for the interactions we're having, especially when we're trapped in our home and um, there's probably only a few people we're interacting with at all. But um, we will find that as we can pursue truth and objectivity, that that begins to manifest itself in the external world and we begin to see the external world more accurately. So. We begin with the morality of truth, the shila of truth, and then when we meditate, we work with yathabhuta, to see nature as it is. Nothing special, nothing particularly sexy about it, nothing romantic, but it's honest. That's it for today. And I hope that you are all taking good care of yourselves and one another. And we will see you back here tomorrow. Goodbye.